special day for uh, my video show 10 subscribers so I thought I'd make a commemorative pewter fish lure using plaster blocks as my mold and uh, then we'll see how good it works so the thing we want to do is melt down the pewter scraps in a melting pot like this I found these pieces at a local thrift store. The reason I'm doing this is so I can skim off the impurities and throw them in the garbage. Then I'll pour a bunch of brand new pure pewter ingots. Like this. I have some uh, plaster mold blocks already ready. Look at that. Fresh. Fish have a general torpedo shaped body. What we really like to do is detail. So let's put the eyeball in there. And we'll put the eyeball in the other side too. Because fish have two eyes, as far as I know. Okay. Close these up and make sure everything's level. Also, make sure there's no wetness on the table. Because uh, that'll interfere. Next, we'll melt down some of those purified pewter ingots. Get ready to pour. If you take care while pouring, you'll be rewarded with a perfect casting. Oops. Most of the metal arrived on the outside of the mold. Sometimes it really helps to go out into the sunlight. There's a giant gaping hole in the mold bottom. I have just a thing to fix this though. Here's some air hardening uh, paper clay. Roll it into shape. And plug the hole. Try to give it even sunlight for uh, Several days. Clean up your workspace. And place your mold. Alright, let's see how it turned out. Ease the mold apart carefully. Wow, very nice definition in the eye and the smile. Tap it lightly to release the casting from the mold. There's our casting, ready for final cleanup. Throw the gates something hard. That's how most of a movie is made in the editing room. Most of a specialty sculpture like this is made in the filing room. You know what they say, home-baked cookies are better than store-bought any day. We're gonna squish out the tail a little more. Well, that's starting to look a lot more like a real fish tail. I'm gonna add a little 
pizzazz to this tail. Put it in the gears of the rolling mill. Just a couple of gear lobes worth. Okay, so we've come down to the basement and we're gonna do our stamping, commemorative stamping. Thanks! Ten! Perfect! One of the tail fins came off. That's what uh, solder's for. You need to use a really strong clamp like your hand or something else. Oh, there we go. This is what you'll attach your uh, fishing line to. Yeah, just finger tight should be good enough. Okay, so moving along, you want to get a metallic enamel paint. Choose your brush wisely, you're going to use it for the whole fish. Mix well and apply. The most important thing to remember is this is a specialty item. Uh, you may want to clean off certain areas to accept different colors of paint. For instance, here I'm highlighting the eyebrow and the smile. They're the most important parts of this uh, lure. A big part of the fun involved in this is you get to faithfully recreate a real fish look in just a few steps. You can add the gills and uh, other assorted decoration that fish generally have. Uh, colored speckles and the eyeball. Let's just make this look as real as possible. To finish it off, I've installed the hook on the end. To make the process a little more familiar, just Pretend you're making an earring because I've used a jump ring here. That's about it. It looks as though we'll have just enough time for a quick fishing test. Yeah. Just kidding! Out of respect for the commemoration. I'll take this straight home and permanently mount it on the hardwood plaque. This is the kind of treatment a uh, specialty item like this deserves. All I need to do now is find a prominent spot in my workshop to display it. Well, thanks so much for watching this time and keep your eyes open for my next video. Thanks, goodbye!